Cheers, and welcome to Chicago Reacts. My name is Lauren, and today I am going to be looking at uh, Internet Historian's second channel, Incognito Mode. We're going to be looking at hobbies, and, you know, I'm sure that some of them will, will be hobbies I can get behind, and some of them I will be very confused by. Um, either that, or we're going to learn about why they're important. So either way, I always feel like I learn something in Internet Historian videos, even in uh, his the secondary channel videos, which are a little bit sillier most of the time, which I appreciate. I appreciate getting to know him more. I feel like I get to know him more as a person in the incognito mode videos, um, you know, as opposed to like just him knowing a lot more about a subject than me and him imparting that information to me, which I appreciate him for. But I'm curious to see what he has to say about hobbies, or is like, is it going to be about the history of hobbies? I don't know. I'm excited to find out, though. So, without any further ado at all, let us begin. Brought to you by Waldorf Tanks. Waldorf hobbies. Tanks. <laughs> hobbies. What are hobbies? Is rock climbing a hobby? Can be. Bye. All this and more on In The Field. All right, so do you have any hobbies? I do, actually. I have many. Really? Yeah, swindling larger YouTube channels. That's probably the biggest one. But mm. outside of that, I play Dungeons & Dragons every week. Nerd. Uh, okay, well... No, sorry, carry on. Sorry, I didn't realise my mic was on. Carry on. <laughs> Do you just have a big red button that you push to mute <laughs> yeah, 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 when you yeah, want yeah, to yeah. yell slurs? Tell me about your hobbies. The older you get, the more maintenances around the house become your hobbies. <laughs> I do quite a lot of gardening. Old green thumb, eh? See, I wouldn't know much about maintenances around the house because I rent. So, maintenances around the house... I will notice them sometimes, and then I tell the landlord, and then he- I'm not amazing at keeping the plants alive, or fruiting, <laughs> but- I am good at keeping them. Yeah. Once in a while, landscaping as well, like I rent the diggers, and then I smooth out the dirt and such. Mm. Otherwise, <laughs> I watch a lot of YouTube. So that's interesting, because I don't. Interesting. I don't know if that makes me a bad YouTuber or a good one. Because... Oh, oh, I've got my hand in the air. I have the answer to this one, man. <laughs> Am I a good YouTuber or not? <gasps> bad! I want to guess bad YouTuber. <laughs> Carry on, <laughs> Minikudos. <laughs> I like that they did manage to find a uh, image here with a person raising their hand whose sweater exactly matches the eyes. <laughs> Of the Internet Historian's animated characters. Was it the awful videos or the lack of uploads? <laughs> oh, I'd say both, sir. <laughs> well, Timmy, maybe one day you too can put off uploading to your YouTube channel. Something I find interesting but I'd never do is those people who go like, I don't know what you call it, like dredging or uh, magnet fishing, that's what it's called. Yeah. Where you, like, you see these videos on YouTube and TikTok, which are probably like faked a lot of the time, but mm. I'm sure they still... You find that just so many guns. I love that stuff. Watching people panning for gold, people like looking around with metal detectors and stuff. In fact, I was so into that stuff for a while. This is before I had a YouTube channel that I bought a metal detector and I went to his wow. store and I'm like, come on, we're going to go to a, down to a thing. We're going to go to a park yeah. or something and we're going to find a creek and we're just going to like metal detect around. As soon as I had the metal detector in my hand, I was so embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> I just felt embarrassed. I can't explain it. The reality said it. I've been metal detecting one time. I was very young. Like, the metal detector was as big as me young. Um, and I don't think I found anything, and I never did it again. I was like, if I want to dig holes in the dirt, I will dig holes where I wish, and no machine shall tell me where to dig. And maybe I will find something, and maybe I will not. And one time I found a little plastic knight. <laughs> so, you know, couldn't have found that with a metal detector. Didn't think you'd have to be the guy going metal detecting. <laughs> yeah, and, and we went down to, like, this creek, and on the way there, you'd pass by people, and you'd kind of, like, try to push the metal detector kind of behind their line of sight so they wouldn't <laughs> see you. And then we got down there and boy, that metal detector was a real piece of shit. I didn't have much money at the time, so I just bought like the cheapest one. <laughs> and so it only made a beeping noise when there wasn't anything. <laughs> so 
<laughs> it's the yeah. worst scenario. Yes. It still works, but it's now incredibly it's annoying. Loud and awful. Yeah. <laughs> and she, <laughs> I love the that her story is so mad. She just she leaves you and you have to walk home that day. We didn't find anything except like one bottle cap, and then like on the way back we're like, oh, there's a beach. All right, fine. I'm gonna try the beach, and couldn't find anything. We're making this really loud fucking noise. People are looking at us. <laughs> and then I went, all right, I'm not finding anything here. Hold on. And I threw $2 into the sand <laughs> to see if the thing would pick it up. It not only didn't pick it up, but then I lost the $2 <laughs> in the sand. I was, I lost my... <laughs> uh, stupid fucking hobby. And I haven't been metal detecting ever since. I would quite like to get into pigeon racing. Okay. <laughs> I met a guy who bred and raced pigeons. Okay. And it is fascinating. That I've seen there's like a there's like a family that does pigeons. They raise they raise like uh homing pigeons. I've seen I've seen a couple of videos from them. That was kind of interesting, not gonna I'll lie. race these things over, you know, like four hundred kilometers. Oh wow. And it'll come like down to the wire yeah it is really cool the way they breed these particular pigeons and like oh well you know this now one has particular stamina but this one has a lot of speed yeah and the thing is you can keep pigeons basically the same way you keep chickens mm. but they just sit there and make this noise like that's a really good pigeon noise. Oh, thank you. Instead of like, wah, 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 like a chicken does, <laughs> right? And chickens are awful and they stink but pigeons are just like Hey, I'm purring like a cat, you know? I also don't like pigeons, but I will give you that they are quieter and less smelly than chickens. Yes. Possibly less tasty too, though, but... My only issue with something like pigeon racing is because it's, I'm assuming, of somewhat of a niche sport, I would feel like I'd want, like, cool video game stat. Is that a freaking joke? Pigeon racing faces extinction as clubs struggle to attract fledgling talent. Because birds... <laughs> like baby birds are fledglings yes like fledgling that's a thing right i think this article writer was being it's punny involved you know like if i was going to be breeding these little suckers i'd want to have like a ui where i can be like here's this guy's speed rating out of 10 they do that they do that what the fuck they have these little ankle bracelet things and then they have like a qr code on them and then they have like these websites online that take all of their stats and track them by GPS and do all this stuff. It's like crazy. That's like sports stats, but for birds. And you know what? Here's how you race a pigeon, right? <laughs> you throw it really hard. You go to the starting line and then you let it go. And then you sit in a chair having a few drinks. And then someone's going to call you on the phone in a few hours and tell you that, that you won or lost. <laughs> it's brilliant. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> that is 100% the kind of racing I want to get into now, actually. Or maybe I will just uh, get a significant other who's into it, and that way they can take care of the pigeons, um, and I can just enjoy the race. <laughs> the thought of that is really funny. Yeah, and it's like, once you win, then you can put this pigeon out to stud like a bull. Uh, this one's the fastest. Well, now it's worth like a hundred grand. Come on. And you put it in a cage with like 200 female pigeons. And you play romantic pigeon music. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you know that this is just going to be the, the greatest moment of this pigeon's life. It's fucking hilarious. My problem is pigeons suck and I, I think something like a hawk or something seems way cooler to breed. Hawks are pretty cool. Well, hawks are the natural enemy of the pigeon you see <laughs> so what you're saying is i should breed hawks and you should breed pigeons no we'll see who wins <laughs> no keep yours away from my <laughs> it's not fair ad time world of tanks sponsorship Sandra, have you heard about this new free-to-play MMO with over 160 million players? The best thing about World of Tanks is, not just that it's free, which it is, is that they're continuously pumping out new content. Like an old drainpipe in the Philippines, there's a constant flow of content into the greater ocean. Did you know you can enjoy World of Tanks on a console? Or on the mobile phone. All you have to do is call up this number and you tell them where you want to move. Yeah, go five yards forward. Fire. Did, did I hit him? That's a hit. Now, Sandra, this game is set in the post-apocalypse. All of the animals have gone extinct except for the tank. But then a world war breaks out between them. 
Hey, Muhammad, I heard there's only one tank in the whole game. That's not true, Sandra. In fact, there are lots of different classes of tank. You can be a healing tank, you can be a stealth tank, you can even be a druid tank. This is downtown London, before any sort of conflict happened. Boy, this really reminds me of a war I can't mention, Sandra. So go to the link below and use the code COMBAT. We'll give you a Cromwell B premium tank. 250,000 credits. Seven days World Tank premium account time, plus three rental premium tanks. By the way, they sent us some promo stuff, and some of these are like ads that have Arnold Schwarzenegger in them, and Mila Jokovic and Chuck Norris. I don't know why they sent me this, but it's brilliant. Look at this. Also, they collaborate with Girls und Panzer. Oh, I actually like that one. And same with Valkyrie Chronicles. That's a good game. You know, Sandra, I heard... I've actually heard of both of those. Shocking. They're adding a dating sim to World of Tanks. Oh, Cromwell Summer. My barrel is all filled with ash and debris. Take this pipe cleaner and go to town. Sandra, how come you're in that tank right now? I don't know. Oh, stop it. You're destroying the whole out. set. Oh, no. So click on the link in the description below and use code COMBAT to get a whole bunch of stuff. Look at this stuff. Add over. I know what the what, what the worst hobby is. What? Candle making. <laughs> really? Oh, what's the fucking point? <laughs> Go down to the store and buy a big candle for a buck. Or if you want a scented one, they're everywhere. Like, I don't understand why people are making their own candles. What's the... Uh, there's one fun part about candle making, which is that you can dip your hand in the hot wax, and then you've got, like, a claw thing that you can start, you know, peeling away. It is surprising that isn't some kind of therapeutical thing, because that seems like somewhere like... It is nice. Oh, it is. Oh, yeah. I was like, it is nice. It is nice to do that. I've made candles once. Uh, when I was in elementary school, we had, like, a... Uh, I don't know, a pioneer day? Um, when we were learning about like colonialism or something but we had one day where it's like you learn we learned how to do some of the things like they taught us how to do candle making so we had this just giant like huge bucket um that was like on over a stove in the rec room area and it was just full of melted crayons just like they just i do not know how many crayons died that day but there were a lot of them so like then we just took a string on like a stick and like dipped the dipped it in until we had like a candle in the colors we wanted to have the candle in um i just there's a lot of crayons that died to make those candles for us fourth graders um but you know like we learned how to knit with pencils <laughs> like pencil knitting um and things like which is like it was a, a day where we just learned how to do crafts essentially like, uh, have you been to the wax dipping <laughs> yes yeah they got those smoke pots and acupuncture yeah, and shit. why acupuncture. don't they have wax dipping that's mm. the perfect like massage thing because you know it kind of hurts like a lot mm. of those kind of treatments you know acupuncture massaging there there's like a pain element to them mm. but there's also like a satisfaction element to them where afterwards you feel like ah. mm. and then afterwards your skin would probably feel real like moisturized or something yeah yeah because you were sweat trains on the other hand i could i could see trains because trains are like that's a bit of a novelty mm. Like an old train's kind of cool to ride on. There's this park in Melbourne, and it's got like this tiny train. And there's a little conductor dude that sits in the front, and he just gives rides like all day. That's awesome. Yeah, I was enjoying the hell out of that, and I understood it all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just suddenly, all the all the cynicism that went into your early videos mm, washes, washes away. away. That's why you only upload twice a year now. <laughs> yes, no, I'm just too obsessed with. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> I've also managed I've also ridden on a steam train. Like we got we got to ride on a steam engine for my brother's like fourth birthday. It was quite Trains now. Oh, it's like the DC forty five? <laughs> Running on time, I see. Would you tie a woman to the tracks? Do you reckon that do they ever do that? Is that a real thing someone did? I would presume so. I would presume that's a pretty good way of taking someone out. That has to be one of the most horrible way. Like, you're going to be mincemeat 100% chance. There's no way you're getting out of that. Throw that one up, Jamie. Is anyone ever Turns out, while well, rare, yes, there are never several known instances of it happening. We got tied to the railroad track. When did they start using the guillotine? That was around the 1700s, wasn't it? And that's like the same time that the train was around. Why didn't they just use the train? <laughs>
<laughs> well, a bit messy, messier to clean up, I think. You can't just have a train running around covered in gore all the time. Yeah, true. You know what's crazy about the guillotine is the last, you know, government-issued guillotining in France happened when the first Star Wars movie was in theatres. Yeah, I was going to say it's like the 1970s or something, isn't it? Yeah, it's like way later than you'd think. Yeah. I think I did know that, but it is always something that I... It, it leaves my brain. Do you reckon it hurts? I actually think about that more often than I should. Because mm. they say that your brain activity still kicks around for a good, like, 30 seconds afterwards. Yeah, I could totally see that. Do you reckon you're just like, ah, f***. Well, this sucks. Well, you'd land in the basket and then you'd be all nauseous, right? Because you'd be like, you'd spin and then land upside down. And you'd be like, my face is right up against this wicker. <laughs> this is terrible. Yeah, this just uh, sucks. You know, then you might be a bit bored for a little while, like just waiting to die. <laughs> I, I hate <laughs> thinking about this. This is like, this is stressing me out like it's something I have to do later. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, what would be the worst part about getting guillotined? Because I suppose the blade is quick, at least. There would be a moment just before you put your head in it that you get really close to the guillotine and you kind of have this thought that's like, oh, this is really dangerous. <laughs> I should you be know doing what I mean? yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like when you get too close to a, like a fan saw or... Yeah, you, you get know, like a tingle in your hand. Us. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've got it. Right. So what you do is yeah. underneath you want to have a bit of a lever like a seesaw and then you have the basket there so the moment it cuts through your head falls off it launches your head straight <laughs> into the air and then it's kind of like whoa i get to see the whole crowd that'd be the worst if it like only cut through halfway yeah or it gets stuck and then they you try to like to pull it up again and then, and then that's pulling your neck as well uh, and, and oh. they just kind of like they just stand above it and just kick the back of your head <laughs> Uh, we're gonna need a couple i feel like that did happen more often when they were using like swords and axes right to cut off heads before they came up with the guillotine like that happened to Catherine howard um like it took a couple of tries for king henry to for like the executioner that he got for her to get her head off like it hit her in the back and like her her death was messy. Well, fellas, just to jump up and down on the blade, please. <laughs> okay. Oh, here's the problem. You tied a bloody knot in the rope. It's caught against the... It's like caught against the wooden beam. This is very morbid. Sorry, I'm just, I'm just thinking about other ways to do the guillotine. Because you could have them... You could have them at the very top. <laughs> you drop them onto the... Ah! Yeah. Or you have an enormous spring underneath the blade, so everyone has to kind of pull, 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 and then it and then it goes off. Yeah, right. Yeah, like you're loading. This feels like if, if like as seen on TV, infomercials invented a guillotine. Like, aren't you sick and tired of that normal guillotine? And they invent this weird double-sided guillotine that can like cut. It slices. It dices. <laughs> And only three payments of thirty nine ninety five plus plus return. The old person tries to drop the blade, but then they just kind of fall over, and then they oh yeah yeah they try and pull on the rope, and then they just immediately go and turn to the camera ah like holding their wrist. <laughs> what about one that's like a fan, and it's like oh yeah, so you just keep sliding people through it, and like a conveyor, and then have them turned into <laughs> little slices. Oh yeah, that would be quite nice. Yeah, we're we're essentially describing a deli slicer, but yeah. Electric chair, that sounds pretty bad, but I feel like it'd be pretty quick. Okay, so how do we improve the electric chair? No, I feel like the guillotine is definitely faster than the electric chair, dude. Like, I mean, and that it might just be because I've just recently rewatched The Green Mile, but I'm just like, mm -mm, I feel like like the gu guillotine, guillotine, however, like, I feel like that would be faster. Yeah. I'm thinking what you do is instead of one big shot, just thousands of little shots. <laughs> they just randomly occur all over your body. Yeah, yeah. It's like you're constantly licking a nine volt battery. Yeah. What if they just tape the battery to your tongue and then walk away and go? <laughs> it does one damage at a time, but eventually, well, that's just death by a thousand cuts, but it's death by a thousand small shocks. <laughs> oh, fuck. I wonder if you did just cover someone in wet nine volt batteries, like whether you would die from starvation or like electrical cuts. Mm, I think eventually, like, your muscles must just give out. But it's like the muscles, it'll be your heart or brain that, like, yeah, gives up. Yeah, yeah, your heart would give out. Yeah, that would be it. Yeah. You'd, you'd just get overexerted. Yeah. This, okay, hold on. What if electrical chair, but there's a phone to play Family Guy on it while you die? <laughs> hey, Pete. <laughs> what if, okay, what if, like... Only Family oh, Guy? Shit. I just lost it. <laughs> 
did that, the Family Guy phone flashbanged you. Throw it flashbang. <laughs> <laughs> that just wiped your brain like a <laughs> men in <and> black clicker. <laughs> yeah. Um. <laughs> okay, imagine, okay, imagine a men in black if instead you didn't see anything and they held up Family Guy funny moments compilation. <laughs> <laughs> One of those things that I got interested in for quite a while was oysters. Oysters? Yeah. As oysters. a hobby? Yeah, I just thought they were really interesting. You went on oysters.com? <laughs> I don't know what that is. It won't be good, though. <laughs> and I went to this oyster tour in Tasmania, and they were just telling me about all these, like, really interesting things about oysters. So, yeah, we used to you have these piles and piles of shells we would burn them and turn them into lime. Oh, really? Okay. Sure. Uh, yeah, so anyway, most oysters are about seven years old, and, and here's how they mate. <laughs> Let me get some of that oyster seed. <laughs> yeah. I think it's a clam, not an oyster, but there's a picture where, like, they put a bunch of salt in front of a clam, and its big, gross tongue, like, flops out and licks up all the salt. Ooh. Have you, have you seen that? No. Let me find that. It's really, it is interesting. Pull that one up, Jamie. It's doing it. Isn't that fucked up? Yeah, they're pretty awful. I just want to fucking slam my fist down on it when its tongue's out. Do you reckon it pulls its tongue in and goes, ooh, salty? <laughs> no, it's from the ocean. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the because if it hated salt, but then, like, it also has to use its tongue as its, like, primary means of transportation, so it has to, like, put its tongue mm. in the salt to get away from the salt. It's kind of like a, it's like a saw trap almost. Yes, why hasn't anyone done saw but for animals? Yes. <laughs> You're always poking your tongue out at people. Well, now, now there's salt around and stuff. What if there was a saw movie where you just did it to, like, innocuous animals? And no one gave a shit about, like, clams and, like, deep sea anglerfish. You're always just swimming around in the dark. Now you're sellotaped to a 800 watt light bulb. <laughs> <laughs> he's having like a mussel and clam stew but he throws them all in the pot and then turns the water on to boil and he goes ah a hair i have set up a trap you must escape before <laughs> the water boil but he always intended just to have a stew yeah exactly he just watches as they boil because they're fucking like clams they can't do anything <laughs> now comes the warm butter <laughs> If you do not escape in 10 seconds, you'll be enveloped in fresh cream, which will permeate into your lungs and tongue, rendering you unable to move. What's an animal you'd like to see in a saw trap? Sometimes I see those birds that are like, they're usually water birds, and they've got these very long slender legs. I just think, God, that would be satisfying just to walk over and be like, snap that. <laughs> Jesus. You know what I mean? Like, no, I don't actually want to hurt it, but... <laughs> like, like a breadstick. Yeah, yeah it's kind of... I'm, and I'm, I'm, I'm not going to, but it's kind of like, you know, when your mate is showing off a brand new pencil? Oh, yeah, and you just... Play. And he's like, I love this thing. Ah, oh, I've sharpened it perfectly. And you just want to reach over and snap it. In my head, all this stuff is absolutely hilarious. In real life, <laughs> one time there was this mouse that got caught in a mouse trap at our place. And I couldn't do it. I couldn't finish him. So I had to let him go free in the park. Yeah, I, I couldn't bring myself to do that either. I feel like my problem with sore is or just... We had a mouse once and um, it, well, it was, there was a, it was an actual problem. Like we had a couple of them. But like um, under the sink, there was like a sticky trap that we didn't realize was under there. And like a mouse got caught in that. And we're like, well, what do we do? Like, ugh, it was awful. It was... Like, ugh, it was a terrible day. <laughs> I was like, what do we do? So. Just any horror movie, really. Like, don't get sticky traps about for like, just like, that is my, like, plea, essentially. Like, if they're, like, don't, like, if for like little bugs and stuff, fine, get a sticky trap. Don't get the sticky trap where there's mice. Like, it's just so inhumane and awful. Which is another hobby a lot of people seem to love that I just don't understand. People never deserve it. No. Which I guess is kind of the point, but mm. when it's like, oh, just some teacher who didn't like appreciate it's... their family enough or something, it's like, this person doesn't deserve to have their like, face cut in half. Yeah, no. That's a sort of lesson that you would learn over the course of a lifetime to like appreciate your family you know what i mean yeah like that one's yeah. gonna that one's gonna work itself out you've just given them ptsd you haven't solved anything 
one I like time one. I dungeoned and dragoned. Okay, interesting. Where was this? I was invited to do some D&D stuff back in my university Ooh. days. I showed up on a Saturday. It was about one in the afternoon. And we were there until about seven o'clock. And we had to call it quits at seven o'clock because the host's mum was coming home then. <laughs> in that six hours, I think we managed to play for about an hour and then the other three hours were spent setting up the game and the other two arguing about the rules <laughs> so you had the authentic experience is what you're saying yeah, i am yeah. amazed that anyone gets to do more than about 15 minutes of gaming per four hour session you got any idea that's that's kind of fair uh <laughs> Um, like, I mean, I, I play, we don't play every week. Unfortunately, everyone's got busy schedules, but, um, when we play it, it there's a significant amount of, uh, well, you know, there's, okay. There's a critical role joke. That's like at dawn we plan. And it's like, yeah, there's a lot of discussion, uh, that can happen. Um, but like really the, the way you kind of can get away like around, like, arguing over the rules too much is a have a dm who knows what they're doing um and b play with some more fairly easygoing people so it's just like so you have instead of having someone who's just rules lawyering everything you know you have you just like you're having fun with your friends but you're all pretending to be somebody different and maybe you can kill a guy. You, you have a killer man? Uh, I do remember one time I went to a card store to buy some cards and they were having like their weekly D&D &D night where like a whole bunch of different tables were all set up for people to play D&D. &D. Yeah. And there's a guy sitting at one of them who had head to toe full Deadpool merch on. Oh. He had a Deadpool hat. He had a Deadpool oh. jumper on. The jeans, I believe, probably just regular jeans, but they were, the, they were black to fit with the color scheme. <laughs> yeah. And then he had red and black sneakers which i don't know if they were deadpool branded but they mm. were definitely you know continuing the color scheme you know what maybe it was like a bad coincidence like maybe these are all the things he doesn't usually wear because <laughs> okay this happened to me once right somehow when i was like 11 i think my mum had bought me a camouflage shirt and yeah camouflage shorts and so, like my dad right he kind of wanted me to be a bit of a snob for some reason when i was a kid right yeah so he used to take me to the driving range all the time and i remember looking in my closet and going oh oh i don't have anything except this camouflage shirt <laughs> and these camouflage shorts that i never wear and so i just had to wear both of those and so i looked like i was going to the military at age 11 and i remember distinctly like we were waiting to go in and there's these two absolute strangers who walk by in the other direction and they salute and I just died. That does sound like a 16 year old boy thing to do though. Like, like just, oh, there's a child in military garb. Uh, like, oh, like that does, that sounds like something people I know. That's probably what happened to this dude. I think I would like to retire to a small town in Tasmania called How is this a Launceston. Hobby? Okay. And one of the reasons is I was there and I was walking around downtown and, oh, neat, looks like a Warhammer store. So I went in and I bought a book, which I never read. And then I went back out and then I walked two stores down and then all of a sudden another comic book store. Okay. And I'm like, hey, that's brilliant. There's like two of these in a very small town. And then I walked around the corner of the block and there was like one of those war games stores right there. It was all within like a hundred yard radius. It was brilliant. I love to find like a real nerdy town that you just like, <laughs> yeah, we're really nerdy, so what? <laughs> yeah, we don't reproduce. We just make a commune in the highlands of Tasmania and we're just shipping Warhammer and D&D. &D. Absolutely. And then we set up like a cross between an internet cafe and a deli, but we only <laughs> let our friends in and then everybody gets free elements right and then eventually yes. one of us becomes the mayor i actually googled once the current mayor of launceston and i thought you know what i could at least take this guy in a fight yeah Easy. which is how they settle the uh, mayorship in tasmania <laughs> yeah, yeah that's right you stand in the middle of the triangle that intersects the three war game stores yeah you, and you have the ultimate war game hmm. Yu -Gi -Oh. 
Because I've never fucking understood Yu-Gi-Oh. Because half my friends play it, but like you look at one of those cards and it is just a novel, man. It is like I have only ever seen the show, and that thing does not seem to have any rules at all. Yeah, those motherfuckers just making shit up on the fly. You can't use two beast cards in one deck without sacrificing at least a spirit card. You what? Who? Where did they play with cards in the show Yu-Gi-Oh? Really? Like, I mean, I never played Yu-Gi-Oh. I had Pokemon cards when I was a kid, but I also never really knew how to play Pokemon um, because we mostly just traded them. Uh, But I do remember, like, all the kids, like, a few years later playing Yu-Gi-Oh, but never really understanding that. And then I I always forget that there was a show. But, like... If you use cards in the show, really? Did that happen? And then Yu Gi Oh immediately does it anyway without sacrificing the spirit card. And then he looks like he's, like, oh no, Yu Gi, you've lost all your life points. But then he's like, hold on a minute, I've got the heart of the cards. What does that mean? <laughs> uh. And then all of a sudden, his name is Yu Gi. So, like, what is the name of the show? Like, Yu Gi Oh! Like, what? All right. Life points come back. He just pulls out a gun. <laughs> Did you ever watch Yu-Gi-Oh? I did. I was obsessed with it as a kid. But you're right. It has such little bearing on the actual game. I like to imagine the card designers just saw every episode come out and they're just like, fuck, fuck, fuck. How are we going to keep up with like? Because obviously kids are going to buy the decks being like, I want to do Yugi's cool movie. Blue Eyes White Dragon, please. I remember as a kid looking up the cards mm. and the descriptions are completely different to the show oh, and being really yeah. disappointed. I also think some kids stole my cards. I'm not sure. I know who it was. It was that goddamn Kaiba. That goddamn Kaiba came to rural New Zealand and stole my dick that was probably worth $20 max. He held your grandfather to ransom. And (laughs) he wanted your dark wizard card. I think Yugi has the... I don't know if his name is Yu-Gi-Oh or Yugi. His name's Yugi, and then when he turns into the version of him that's trapped in the Millennium Puzzle, he's Yami (laughs) Yugi. (laughs) I forgot about that, the Millennium Puzzle. And don't forget the Millennium Eye, Yugi. And that's right, he can like see under Yugi's clothes and, with it or something. And his facial expression would just change when he goes between the two. He had the most bizarre hair of any anime character I've <laughs> ever seen. It was like, what is even happening? Yeah, with that? It's yeah. like three different colors and it's almost a pyramid. At least like most anime characters here, it's like stupid, but you're like, okay, theoretically with enough hair gel, you could make that happen mm-hmm. like clouds here or something. Yeah. Like, There's just a blonde guy with spiky like shaped hair. And then Joey's just from Brooklyn for some reason, even though it's like super Yeah, Japan. you, where, so he, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't it, wait, it wasn't this in a video? Uh, yeah, I also did a video yeah. of this. Sorry. Yeah. Which you can click on the top yeah, right. Yeah, don't, do don't do that. Don't do that. Don't click on that. <laughs> All right, listen up, mini cooters. I've got your granddad. <laughs> I'm going to expose him to my gamma radiation card. I'm going to play a mountain and tap it and cast lightning bolt on your Are force you turning and... Egyptian right now? <laughs> You've already done this joke before. Don't make me do blackface. You're just in denial, mini cooters. Man, you need to start finding someone else to do these. All right, thanks for being on. I'll catch you later. Oh, we'll see you at, uh, well, we've got D&D tonight. And then you said you're coming around for Magic tomorrow. I, 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 my mum's coming home soon. We'll go, go. We've got Yu-Gi-Oh! the day after that. And then we're going to be watching Game of Thrones the day after that. Warhammer, I think, was booked oh, in on Sunday. Chris, so I've got some terrible news. Oh. This is historian. Oh. Internet historian's wife. Oh, okay. That's, he has I, died. <laughs> he won't be able to make any of those appointments. Don't contact this number again. <laughs> I'm Goodbye. at your door looking at you, though. Goodbye. We've been, talk- we've been, talk- our privacy. We've been talking face to face. This time of bereavement. I'm looking at Goodbye. you. Do not forget <laughs> World of Tanks. I will not forget World of Tanks. I will remember World of Tanks. I've seen a lot of videos about World of Tanks. All right. I, I, the fun thing about these videos is that, like, it really, like, half the time it feels like it's loose. It's it's loosely about whatever <laughs> the title is. Um, and, uh, you know, but then, like, there's always like I love the tangents that they go off onto. Like, the tangents are always a lot of fun. I'm just like, ah. Oh. But yeah, no, like that sounds like a fun place to go. Like the that Tasmanian town that's got all the comic book stores. Um, there's a few near me though, so you know, MBD. Um, but they're they're a lot further apart 
than 100 yards. You know, it would take probably 40 minutes to hit each and every one of them by walking. But, oh, well, 30 minutes, 40. But, uh, yeah, so that was Hobbies by Internet Historian. I hope that you all have some interesting hobbies, something different. Like, I don't know. Like, what's your most interesting, like, different hobby? Like, and not that, like, more classic hobbies are boring. Like I said, I do D&D. &D. That's a pretty, uh, like, that, that, that a lot of people do D&D. &D. But I'm, like, trying to think if there's anything that I, like, any of my hobbies that are just, like, outright just different. Um, I mean, I do, I like do painting sometimes. Like that's kind of like not, not everybody does that. Um, hmm. Hmm. I don't know. I think it's fun. I like to hear about like interesting hobbies and like something that's different. So like some of the things that he mentioned here is like, it's like if you do something like metal detecting, like, have you found anything good? Um, like, I mean, I I've seen some of those videos where like they, they go into the lake and they pull stuff out and some of that is actually really interesting um and it would like does it kind of make you feel like a treasure hunter um like you know something I mean, i'd be curious i'd be curious to find out uh what some of y'all's most interesting hobbies are or if it's not even if it's something that just like a lot of people do but you really enjoy it i'd like to hear about that too um like again like i said i talk about uh, the <laughs> the D, D i do all the time um it's and i probably talk about it too much I'm not gonna lie uh, but I still have fun. Um, you know, if, if your hobby is, you know, you go on long walks on the beach, like that's awesome. Like, do you, like, is there a reason that you like the beach as opposed to the woods or is it just proximity or, you know, can you find anything good? Like, tell me, give me your hobbies, people. Also, I think I probably need a new hobby at some point in the near future. So if you've got something good, what should I try? Uh, thanks again for watching. If you want to see more of this sort of thing, make sure you let me know in the comments below. And by giving the video a thumbs up, hitting that like button really helps us know what people want to see. Um, also, you can help us out by subscribing to the channel. We're trying to get to 100,000 subscribers. We are getting pretty close. Um, and like if you're subscribed, you get to, you know, you'll always know when we're putting out new content. We put out uh, new videos every day. Uh, some like between one and three, depending on, on the day. Uh, but we always have something new coming out and you'll always be up to date. Uh, another way you can help us out is by becoming a patron. Um, you get perks for that as well. Of course, uh, we can't do this without our patrons. Um, but like if you're a patron, then you do get, uh, some early content. You can get uh, unedited anime reactions. You can get a couple of other things that are maybe blocked on YouTube for, various reasons so you just can get some extra stuff uh and if you're a patron your uh suggestions will often go straight to the top of the pile um instead of you know like i mean i have a long list of suggestions um that is, we've compiled and we're always adding to so that will always continue to to have new things being added to it but if you're a patron you know depending on your level, like that video that you want to see can go right up to the top. Um, so yeah, like I said, lots of options for you. We really appreciate every, each and every single one of you, regardless of whether or not you are a patron. Um, and I, and I hope to see you all in the next one until then.